Hey, what's up guys? So now I'm gonna show you guys how to use a slip bag, also known as the maze bag. So check it out. Hey, what's up guys, Carlo here. Today I'm gonna show you guys how to use one of my favorite bags at the boxing gym, the slip bag, also known as the maze bag. Now, for those of you guys wondering why it's called the maze bag, well, if we go back in history a little bit, back in the day when they first started using these, they would get these gunny sacks and they would fill them up with corn. Um, they would use corn compared to something like sand or something a little bit more densely packed because the corn would add weight to the bag, but it was also more forgiving on their hands because they would actually punch it. If you look at some of the older maze bags, uh, they were actually larger than this this standard slip bag. They, they're kind of like a hybrid between a slip bag and a standard punching bag. So not only could they use it for their defensive movements, slipping, bobbing and weaving and getting around it, but it could also punch it. So it was more forgiving with the corn. Um, and corn in Espanol and Spanish is called maíz. And that's how the name maize kind of came about. It kind of transformed from maíz to maize. So technically it's called the maíz bag, or if you want to call it the slip bag. Now, I love this bag because I feel like it's underutilized uh, by a lot of us, including myself. Typically when you go to a boxing gym, um, you see everybody using the heavy bags, uh, double end bags, speed bags, sparring, uh, and wh whatever else exercise they may be doing. And you rarely see somebody actually using a slip bag. I mean, you, you occasionally see it, but a lot of times they'll see the slip bag hanging over there in the corner next to the uh, resistance bands and just kind of chilling over there and not being utilized. And I think that this is one of the most neglected pieces of equipment to get along with learning defense. Because if you're a beginner in boxing, a lot of times they'll just show you the fundamentals, your footwork, your stance, the basic punches, jab, straight cross, left hook, uppercut. And then they kind of throw in the defense with it. And I think that's a big mistake because when you start sparring, um, you're not gonna just be punching a target that's not gonna punch back. Your sparring partner is gonna fire back at you. So it's really important for you to have the skill set to deal with that. And I feel that the slip bag does a great job with that. Now, I'm gonna go over four things with you guys. The first thing I'm gonna go over is gonna be getting yourself the correct type of uh, maze bag, whether you purchase one or you make your own, that's completely up to you, uh, the height that I have it at as well. Uh, second thing I'm gonna show you guys is gonna be just the basic movements. So slipping, bobbing and weaving as a stationary target and your basic head movements as well as your movements through your torso. Uh, the third thing I'm going to show you guys is going to be using your feet to move together with the slipping, the bobbing and weaving. So now you're going to be sidestepping, you're going to be pivoting, you're going to be bobbing and weaving underneath it all together as one motion. And then the last thing, the fourth thing I'm going to show you guys is throwing your punches together. So everything will kind of tie in together as one package. Um, that way you guys can kind of utilize it. Make sure that you guys take your time doing it. Practice comes, you know, you want to be perfect at something, you just got to keep practicing over and over and over. Repetition, muscle memory, and you, you eventually get it. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing, which is the most obvious, is to get yourself a slip bag. Um, I got mine from Ringside. This thing weighs about 10 pounds. Um, the weight is important because you want to have enough weight in here to when it starts to swing and it does that pendulum motion like you see here, that it has enough weight to keep that momentum going. If you get something that's a little too light, um, it might slow down much quicker and you're not going to get the same amount of movement and action out of it. The other thing is that it has a good amount of weight. So if you do get hit in the head with it, you know, you got hit in the head. So it kind of reminds you, Hey man, keep your hands up, keep your head moving, get the hell out of the way out of this bag. So make sure you get yourself a good maze bag. Um, if you don't want to buy one, you can make one at home, get yourself um, like a, a tube sock, fill it up with some kind of material like sand or whatever, something that's not going to be too hard. Um, but add weight, I would say at least a minimum of five pounds. I mean, you could technically get like a tennis ball. Um, you can get yourself a smaller size soccer ball, just something that you can put through um, and then hang from the ceiling and then use that if you want to. But I always prefer to get yourself a, a decent maze bag. Ringside has them, Tidal has them. Um, there's several different brands you can get out there. Um, just get yourself a, a correct maze bag like this one. Now, height wise, one thing you'll notice is that the belly, the fat part of the bag, is it a bit is a little bit lower it's almost towards my chin and the reason that it sits a little bit lower is because i'm com i'm standing completely up when you measure it you want to measure it in your boxing stance when you're in your boxing stance you have a slight bend to your knees and because of that you drop down so now so instead of me being five foot eight now i'm five foot seven that drops me down about an inch so now that i'm close to it you can see that it's the proper height 
So when you measure it, make sure that you measure it a little bit lower than your regular standing height because when you get in your boxing stance, it's going to be right there center where, where your head is at. Um, so you want to make sure that you have the correct height from that and that's pretty much it. And then from there, we just go, start to swinging and uh, get to moving and seeing how this thing works. So the next thing is going to be your fundamental movements, which is going to be your slipping, your bobbing, and your weaving. Basically, getting your head out of the way of this target. It's kind of like the old saying goes in boxing is to hit and not get hit. And that's the whole idea behind using the slip bag. Now, when I move the slip bag, personally, I don't like to go too far out with it. You don't want this bag to be swinging wildly and have this long arc. And what that does is it gives you way too much time in between the time that it comes and you passes you to the time it comes back. Yeah, it may, it may have more momentum, more momentum and hit you harder, but that's not the whole point. The whole point is just have, um, is to stay active and moving your head and, and getting into that defensive mode. So I like to kind of keep mine right about here. Maybe I like, I, I guess you can call it like a 45 degree angle if you're looking at it on the ceiling and that's like dead center. You want it to be about 45 degrees out. So when you release it, now that it's moving back and forth, and my head's in the middle, I don't have a lot of time in between the time that it crosses over for me to move my head. So it forces me to always be constantly moving my head, staying alert and being ready for anything. So you don't want the arc of this to be way too far out because again, there's way too much time in between it passing your head for you to kind of reset. So you wanna be always active with it. So you wanna make sure that you get in your boxing stance first and you're nice and comfortable. I'm gonna do this for the sake, I mean, obviously I know there's a lot of different styles, peekaboo, you know, there's all kinds of different styles of boxing, people that are more squared up, but I'm just gonna do this from your traditional boxing stance with your foot step out. I'm an orthodox fighter, my hands are up. So you wanna start off slowly, and when you move this, I'm assuming that you have already learned how to do slips, I need my hat, my hat backwards, how to slip a punch. So you wanna basically, if you're gonna slip to your left, you want to slip this way, pivot that back foot. If you want to slip to the right, you want to pivot that front foot just ever so slightly, putting out that cigarette butt to get, a, get out of the way. With your slips, you want to make sure that you're not slipping a school bus. All you need to do is just get out, out of the way of the punch. If you go too far over, not only are you going to be off balance, but you're not going to be able to mount your counter attack quickly enough. By the time you throw a punch, he's going to be gone already. So it's really important that when you slip it, you do a nice, crisp slip. You don't need to go too far over. You don't need to do one of those because by the time you try to come back up and a counter punch, they're most likely going to be either gone or they're going to be blocking that punch. So it's really important to not do that. So first work on your slipping, get into that rhythm of moving your head. I'll just take my hat off because this is just getting in the way. So get into the habit of moving your head and you can see with the arcing motion, I don't need it to swing wildly. I could just move it, I could bob and weave underneath it. You see how it just kind of bumped against my shoulder? That's because I didn't get low enough uh, with my knees. So it also forces you to really utilize your knees to drop down and not be lazy and just bend at the waist. So going at it again, slip, slipping, slipping. And again, you'll know that if it hits you, that you got hit by the punch. You go so continue to slip move my head all right so pretty simple concept practice makes perfect repetition just do it over and over slip side to side don't always go the same pattern when you slip you always want to have a little bit of a broken rhythm with it you can go to the left and to the right and then to the right and to the left do that again so left, right, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, under. So you can do all types of variations completely up to you. Next is gonna be the weaving part. So this is a very another important part of it because the weaving is what's gonna get you underneath the punches, primarily your hooks. Um, so when, you, when you're doing this with the slip bag and you have your motion, you can start off with a slip and then weaving underneath, slip, and then weaving underneath, slip, and then weave underneath. Always 
maintaining your hands to your face because the last thing you want to do is to kind of come up and then you're completely exposed for a punch. So as you're slipping and you're weaving, always making sure your hands are up and you're in position. Eyes are nice and big, looking at their target. Bobbing, weaving, weaving underneath the punch. That's a hook coming. Oh, another hook's coming, another hook's coming, another hook's coming, another hook's coming. I'm gonna slip that right. There you go. So again, it's good that you continue to practice that repetition. Slip, slip, bobbing and weaving, bobbing and weaving. If this bag hits you, that's perfect. You want it to hit you. You want it to remind you to do it to the best of your ability. Don't want to slack off due to half-ass. So again, you can do your slips. Bobbing and weaving, moving your head, moving your head, moving, hit you a little bit, that's fine. Move it, and that's it. So next, we're gonna go ahead and start adding a little bit of footwork in with this, check it out. So the next component is going to be footwork, adding that in to the slips and the movements I already showed you, slipping, bobbing, and weaving. The bobbing and weaving obviously is gonna help you get your head off the center line, get you moving. The footwork is also going to help you with that, but it's also going to put you in the perfect position to mount your counter attack. Positioning is everything. The proximity from you to your opponent and giving you the advantage as far as positioning is what's going to determine you being able to land your combinations effectively against them. So obviously we'll start off with the maze bag swinging. We already learned our slips, our bobs and our weaves. Now what we want to do is work on your front, back, lateral movement, and pivoting, and then you can also bob and weave with that as well. So, you know, you can work on your front and back movement, step back forward, step back front, step back, step back, step back forward, step back. As it comes over here, you can step over. As it comes back, step to the right, step to the left. And you're essentially kind of simulating a punch coming your way. See, this is a straight cross, right? and the opponent throws it. And if I time him properly, I can step to my left and his punch is exposed, bang, I can come over there and counter. So that's the whole idea behind that. And then from there, you can also work on pivoting, 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 moving that back foot, slipping, pivoting, pivoting, slip, bob, over, weave underneath, weave underneath, step back. Step back, you're out of range. Maybe you're not going to slip the bag. Maybe you're not gonna weave it yet. Maybe you're gonna time it with your hand. And then weave underneath, boom, body shot. Come back, boom. Maybe I'm gonna counter, step over, bang. I'm gonna step this way, bang. So implement your footwork. All the drills that you guys have already learned with footwork, all you're doing is the same drills, except that you're gonna be moving your head and being much more tactical in the way that you move. You're not going to just move for the sake of moving. Now you're moving to put yourself in position to mount in offense, your attack. So I'm slipping this way. I'm moving here. Boom, bang, bang. Move back, bob and weave. Step back, bang, counter, boom. Stepping this way. Oop. Maybe I'll, I'll faint. Faint. I move. So work on all of that, all of your movements. Bob, weave, and step out. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. Pivot, pivot, pivot underneath, pivot back, pivot back again. Move over. Maybe I'm gonna pull. Work on my pulling. You can implement all of those. Again, continue to work on that. So first thing is gonna work on your slips, your bobs and your weaves, adding your footwork into it. Next, we're gonna throw in some punches. So lastly, putting everything together, is obviously gonna be throwing your punches together with your footwork and your head movement. So again, starting with this, you wanna kinda of get yourself into a little bit of a rhythm, moving around the bag, make sure that you're nice and warmed up. You're kinda of going through everything else I showed you in the video. You're slipping, you're bobbing, you're weaving, you're moving underneath, going there. So now you can add punches to it. 
You can get underneath it, slip, bang. Underneath, bob and weave, boom. Combination punches. Boom, 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 bang. Work the bag, boom, bang, bang, bang. Counter, boom. That counter is a right hand to his right hand. And that sounds kind of weird, but it's almost like a, uh, if you want to call it, like a corkscrew punch, is that, if you want to call it that. The punch is coming over, and you're kind of coming to the outside of the punch, and you're coming straight down the middle. And you're landing your two front knuckles right there on it. Right on his chin, you can go sleep. So, again, imagine this being his, his punches, boom, and he's exposed. So anytime your opponent's punches, that means there's an opening, whether it's his left or his right hand. There's a split second for you to exploit an opening. Now, obviously that's a lot harder, a lot harder, uh, said, easier said than done, excuse me. Um, but it's there, the openings are there. So you wanna make sure that you work on, boom, your split timing, bang, bang. Move over, bang, bang, bang. Scoot over, bang. Bang, 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 bang. Boom, 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 boom. Cut the distance off. Maybe you're gonna work on fighting against someone that's much taller than you. And they have the reach advantage. And that's another great thing about this is if you are a shorter person and you're typically fighting people that are taller than you that have a longer reach, this gives you a way to strategize against that person or whoever those people may be. Bang, bang, bang. And getting in there and mounting your offense. Boom, boom. Step over, bang, bang. Step over, bang, bang. Underneath again, staying low. Boom, 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 boom. Bang, bang. Now back out, boom. Oh, moving, bang, bang, bang. Boom, oh, got me. So, implement your punches. You can work your jab, boom. You can work parrying, parrying the jab, boom. And then throwing your punch and getting off the center line as it swings. You can also work on blocking, blocking punch, blocking uppercut, blocking jab, underneath body, body, back around, boom, 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 hooks to the body. Very versatile. As you can see, I'm getting a really great workout. Um, so tie everything together. First start off with slipping, the fundamentals, bobbing and weaving, getting that upper torso moving. Enough to get out of the way of your punches, of the punches, but again, don't overdo it. You're not dodging a train, you're dodging punches, you're moving out of the way of those. After that, add the footwork, moving over, sidestepping, front and back, lateral movement, pivoting, bobbing, weaving com combined with that. All those cool fancy steps you may be trying out Add that to that. And then lastly, add your punches to that, that we have the complete package. And then from there, it's just over and over, repetition, and you'll finally get it. And then when you finally get into your fight, your sparring, wherever it may be, it's gonna come second nature. You know, you won't feel so alien, like you're a fish out of water. And uh, it'll feel a little bit more natural to you. And you may even have some combinations all ready to go. Uh, that you've been saving up just for that fight. So hopefully this video helped you guys out, understand how to use the slip bag, also known as the Maïs bag. Um, I know this is my favorite bag, it continues to be one of my favorite bags uh, to use at the gym just because of the defensive uh, mechanism of using this compared to you know heavy bags, double end bags. So excellent tool. If you guys have any questions or comments, make sure you guys leave them down below in the comments box. I'll see you guys later. Peace.